operating system jitters? You're not alone. If you want to know all the new features packed into Windows 11, plus all the chatters surrounding the launch of Microsoft's latest operating system, then you've come to the right place. We'll break it down so that you can decide whether an upgrade is right for you. This is DIY in 5. Hey everyone, my name's Trisha Hirschberger and you are watching DIY in 5, the show where we make tech simple enough that you can do it yourself. Today we're talking all about Windows 11, what's new, who can get it, how to get it, and more. I don't know about you, but as a PC user, it's been a long time since we've gotten a new operating system. Since 2015, actually. And a lot of us, myself included, are ready for something new. Windows 11 officially launched October 5th, but not all current PC users have gotten the upgrade yet. And some may not wish to. Not to worry, we'll go into all of that. If you find the tips in today's video useful, feel free to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell so that you don't miss out on any future tech tips. So, what's new in Windows 11? The answer is a lot. <laughs> From the look to behind the scenes optimizations, smaller updates, and even improvements with gaming in mind, Windows 11 seems like the next logical evolution for Microsoft. The new look is meant to be simplified, more fluid, and more accessible. Better to work on a wide variety of devices for a wider variety of users, which makes sense given the hybrid nature of so many PC users' lifestyles nowadays. The start menu has moved to the center of the screen, and much of the look is cloud-powered, so it dynamically changes depending on the time of day. There are new multitasking features thanks to new snap layouts, snap groups, and desktops, with improvements for those of us who swap from a single display to a multiple display set up regularly. Widgets are back now, so you can customize your feed to your liking, if that's your thing. And there's an improved health check app as well, where Windows can recommend brightness, power settings, and more based on your usage. Microsoft Teams is now integrated into the taskbar in an effort to make us more connected. Perhaps another hint that Skype will soon be a thing of the past? The Microsoft Store is getting an upgrade as well, with a full redesign. All content, including apps, games, and entertainment, will all be in one place. And you'll now be able to download Android apps in Windows as well. Great news for all the TikTok lovers out there. There's also now the option for third-party developers to make conventional Win32 desktop apps available. So all in all, ideally, that's loads more apps. Again, here you can see the focus on on-the-go devices meant to suit a hybrid lifestyle. Now's where it gets really interesting, though. For gamers, there have been tons of improvements meant to keep PC gamers firmly invested in the Windows ecosystem, from ease of software access to hardware optimizations. The new Game Pass app will replace the Windows 10 Xbox app, which I think many will agree needed a facelift. With Auto HDR, a game with SDR, standard dynamic range, that was built using DirectX 11 or higher, can experience HDR, high dynamic range, enhancements. This allows games to render more levels of brightness and more colors to make the graphics really pop in a way that they couldn't otherwise. Fun fact, this was introduced in Xbox Series X and S consoles and is now here in Windows 11. Direct storage is another game changer, pun intended. Also introduced in the latest consoles, direct storage uses the power and performance of NVMe SSDs to send assets directly to the GPU. Now this can help take the load off the CPU and should help dramatically with load times. Things to note, if your PC does not have a one terabyte or greater PCIe 3.0 NVMe SSD or newer, and a GPU with the DirectX 12 Ultimate spec, you won't be able to make use of this feature. Also, Windows made direct storage available to Windows 10 users as well, provided you have the hardware and Windows 10 version 1909 and up. Gamer or not, if these new features have you excited to upgrade, you'll need to know a few things. First, not all Windows 10 machines will be eligible for the upgrade. There's been a lot of talk about the mandatory TPM, or Trusted Platform Module, requirements. Windows says most PCs that shipped over the past five years can run the TPM 2.0 module required for Windows 11. However, not all of them are set up to run it, so the user may have to check whether it's been enabled or not. Second, the upgrade to Windows 11 is free and rolling out slowly. 
first to new eligible devices, then to others based on hardware eligibility, reliability metrics, age of device, and other factors. Windows is hoping to have all eligible devices offered the free upgrade by mid-2022. Now you can find these updates by checking for new updates within your Windows Update settings. If you don't want to wait and are willing to chance any early hiccups, get in there! I'm a bit overly cautious, so I'd say don't trust this on your primary device, maybe on a tester, but you do you. Make sure your PC is enrolled in Microsoft's Insider program and meets the requirements, then you can simply download the Windows 11 Insider Preview build today and test out some of its new features. This build will change as the update starts rolling out to general users according to found bugs, etc., that are customary with any new OS rollout. So that's that. If you've already upgraded and want to share your feedback about Microsoft's latest operating system, please do so in the comments. If you're trying to upgrade and having difficulty, let us know that as well, and hopefully someone from the Kingston team will be able to fly in with the assist. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you next time with more DIY in 5.